fractures of the distal part of radius I will start with Collis fracture okay Collis fracture is a transverse fracture of the radius just above the wrist okay with dorsal displacement of the distal fragments so we have a transverse fracture of the distal part of the radius with the fragments that resulted from this fracture distally or dorsally displaced okay this is Collis a fracture. Collis fracture is caused by usually by falling down on outstretched hand with extreme dorsiflexion of the hand. Extreme dorsiflexion, and this is this dorsiflexion is a re result of trying to ease a fall. You have the patient just try to make the fall easier, so he dorsiflex his hand and Collis fracture result okay by the way colis is the most common of all fractures in older people and this is due to osteoporosis so colis is the most common among uh, fractures okay in older people in older people okay the patient who comes to you is usually an older woman who gives a history of falling down and her outstretched dorsiflexed hand okay and a lot of these females or males patient comes to you with a special feature okay this special appearance or feature called dinner fork appearance dinner fork appearance uh, what is dinner fork appearance it is a prominence on the back of the wrist a prominence in the back of the wrist with depression on the front let me just put lines prominent in the, tors in the dorsal of the wrist and okay depression on the front here again prominence and depression this is dinner fork appearance okay on x-ray we are able to see a transverse fracture this is transverse fracture again just point this transverse fracture sometimes the patient comes with a styloid process displacement styloid process displacement of course the the transverse fracture the, of the distal part of the radius okay so what is the treatment of cause fracture the treatments actually of cause fracture depends on the presence of displacement or not do we have displacement or not if ye, if no we don't have displacement then we just apply a dorsal splint just we put what we call a dorsal splint uh, dorsal because it's in the dorsal part of the arm and hand then after the swelling resolves we apply a full cast so the uh, target behind just putting dorsal splint is waiting for a swelling to resolve after resolving of the uh, swelling we bought a full cast okay so after this complete cast we wait for four to 14 days we wait Four or sorry, ten to fourteen days. After this, we make some X-rays of the hand to make sure that there is no slipping, no slipping. So if we have no slipping, then then we keep the cast for four weeks. Okay if we have slipping we have to do open reduction and internal fixation okay so again a dorsal split after dorsal splint we wait just uh, the swelling to resolve after that we put full cast then we wait 10 to 14 days after this we make x-ray to show any split is slipping if there is no slipping we have to keep cast for four weeks if there is slipping we have to do open reduction and internal fixation 
in the case of displaced colors, what we have to do is close reduction, close reduction under anesthesia, of course, okay? So this reduction is done by many steps. First of all, we have to grasp or oh, before starting the maneuver, of course, don't don't forget to do neurovascular examination to make sure that there is no medial nerve or other nerves entrapment. Okay, okay. By starting the maneuver, we have to grasp the hand and apply attraction, sometimes with extension of the hand to disimpact the fragments. So we have to grasp the hand apply attraction with some extension to disimpact the fragments after that we have to push we have to push in place on the dorsal part of the hand to reduce the fragments uh, to place okay while this we have to manipulate the rest into pronation flexion a brunation, a flexion, and ulnar deviation. Brunation, flexion, and ulnar deviation. So how this is how we do close reduction by a traction, reduction into place of the fragments with brunation, ulnar deviation, and somehow flexion okay after reduction we have to repeat neurovascular examination and to repeat x-ray to make sure that displacement is good enough if yes displacement is good enough is good enough we have to put dorsal uh, slab oh sorry not forecast dorsal slab just make it okay but dorsal sl slab okay of course uh, this uh, slab will extend from below the elbow just below the elbow from the dorsal part to the metacarpal joint okay uh, with two-thirds of the way around circumstance circumferences of the wrist uh, closed by the slab okay uh, we can after this just uh, close the arm with a crepe bandage okay this is not very important okay uh, the outcome in old people is good but in young people is poor it is poor in young people Let's just now move to complications of uh, co colors fracture complications is divided or are divided into early and late complications. The early complications, the most important of them is neurovascular complications, okay, injuring some blood vessels or nerve. Well, this is an early complication. Middle nerve, of course, is the most common to be injured, causing numbness, paresthesia, pain, in the lateral three fingers of the hand like just like what happens in carpal tunnel syndrome as a result of medial nerve compression okay in some cases irritation okay thinner atrophy is possible too and medial nerve compression muscle relaxing and wasting etc okay in in some cases, irritation of medial nerve causes abnormal excitation of nervous tissue, okay, leading to abnormal sympathetic uh, stimulation or excitation, leading to some symptoms. Uh, this is what we call reflex sympathetic dystrophy. So reflex sympathetic dystrophy and injury. To the median nerve this injury causes pain and some irritation this irritation will cause some impulses which goes to the central nervous system after that to the sympathetic stimulation causing sympathetic stimulation and some uh, symptoms as a result okay redness as we can see this is 
reflex sympathetic dystrophy, redness, hotness, sometimes coldness, and paresthesia, sweating, etc. Okay, these are two early complications: middle nerve or middle nerve injury, neurovascular injuries, and post-traumatic reflex sympathetic dystrophy. What about late complications? As usual, in fractures, late complications include, in the first place, mal or non-union. Okay, we here can see mal union, okay, or non-union. Another late complication is extensor pollicis longus rupture. Okay, rupture of the extensor pollicis longus muscle and tendon, causing a problem in extending the thumb. The thumb is not extended anymore. Okay, early complication, late complications, early complications like neurovascular complications, middle nerve injury, sympathetic reflex sympathetic dystrophy as a result of the injury. The central nervous system will uh, put some impulses to the sympathetic autonomic nervous system, causing swelling, hotness, redness, and other sim warmth and other symptoms. Okay, late complications again, mal or non-union, and extensor pollicis longus rupture leading to failure of extension of the of the thumb. Okay, thank you. See you in the next video.